Yeah. Um, okay, you mentioned, you mentioned something, storytelling. How have you managed, because like Sandy here is, is embarking on, you know, bringing awareness about the garden beneath the sea. Um, how have you managed to be a creative storyteller all these years? And what hurdles have you loved? What hurdles have you hated? How have you told stories? That's a great question. Um, particularly for me as a lawyer. I mean, the hard thing for lawyers is to tell the truth. And um, I've, I've learnt that I, if I can look the camera in the eye or the journalist and tell the truth, I don't have to worry about anything if I just tell the truth. And the truth sets us free. And the truth is ours. And the truth is on the streets and in our gardens. So every time I talk to anybody, I say, look, I'm not a gardener. You know, my plants die. But some live. I just tell people how ordinary I am. And just to show you how I'm a slow learner, I've had over 19,000 people through the house. For a while I, well, for most of the time, I couldn't understand why people came. I thought, it's just a kitchen and bathroom renovation. And it took me that many people and that length of time to understand that it had value. And the value it has is not discussed. It's the unspoken words. It's the, the fear that's not admitted to that really holds us back from doing things we need to do. So when I was married, if there was a, a couple there, the, the woman would hang back and talk to my wife and she, she would say, what's it really like? <laughs> the big questions. You know, boys, they want to talk about pumps and mechanics. And that was a really powerful moment to learn that people are actually afraid of a water efficient shower head. They're actually afraid of an energy efficient light bulb. I guess in a way it's like the love that dare not speak its name. People are afraid to say, look, I want to do something, but I'm afraid it won't work. It's really interesting. Here we are in a moment in human history when we have so much wealth quote unquote education and we're actually afraid to try new things. I condemn primary, secondary and tertiary education because it's taught us to be afraid of making mistakes. Damn that. Everything that's been good in my life has been because of the mistakes I've made. And our middle class culture is afraid of making mistakes when they're thinking about going sustainable. If there's one thing I'd like you to take away tonight is go out and make as many bloody mistakes as you can. Kill as many bloody plants as you can, but have a go. Because the only judge that matters is you, and once you've had a plant that gets up and you've tasted it, you're away, you're free. Yeah, that's true. I mean, doing, doing the verge as I've done, um, people driving up the street looking at it would stop initially after about the first three weeks and the plants were just going <laughs> and people would stop and they'd wind down the window what are you giving them what are they on and I say sunlight a <laughs> little bit of water and yeah it's that it is that fear it, it, it's there's fear around everything that we're heading into and to step out and say well we're going to gather here tonight we're going to make a stand we're going to say support transition we're, we're, we want to hear about your book most of all we want to hear about your road and your experiences because those fears are still there and the structures while some are crumbling they're still there so what's been What's been your inner mechanisms to deal with walls? 
and speed Man. humps and spikes on the road. Good questions, Costa. Look, I've been at my weakest in the last two or three years. I've had people who I had to dinner who were friends who've become the Loch Ness monster in my life. I don't understand it. People who've, you know, been my friends for 10, 15 years have suddenly said terrible things about me that I haven't heard, heard about except second hand. And they're four or five houses away. Not a lot, but enough. You only need about three or four people who've got a, a knack of getting your Achilles heel to really bring you down. And if they're your friends or your neighbours, they can really bring you down. I've had some tough moments with this stuff with food. Words matter. Um, and I've been trained to listen to them. So when people say, look, I'm supportive of um, sustainability, but I know what they're saying is not like when an engineer said to me, um, you can't do that. What he's really saying is, I can't do that and I don't want you to try. And the thing that's brought me to the other side, most times in those difficult moments, is listening to the words that are used, understanding the fear that they reflect, and then thinking, the only person who's going to give me the strength that I need is me. I mean, make no mistake about it, we're doing things that are quite challenging to some people. And they can be our closest friends, our lover, our next door neighbour, a counsellor we thought would support us, a media person. You'll all find this. It's a journey each of us have to take and have, I hope, the courage to say, oh well, the only way I know is to go on. And it's tough sometimes. And if I can be of any use to you tonight, I'd like you to carry these words in those moments, which is, I can do this. Because you matter, each of you. Because you're out there in the front doing this stuff. So do think about that and I hope it helps you. I, I'm going to take a couple of questions in a second, but that reminded me of something that Russ Grayson, I, I don't know if you've heard of Russ Grayson around the these networks. He was with Sydney City and he's a real champion of the community garden and city farm network um, along with his partner Fiona. He said an interesting thing and when, when, you, when you put this in perspective it marries in beautifully what you said. Um, for example, when I first took on the role with ABC people responded to websites, people respond to council and usually the ones that have the time to sit at home and write something because they're not here <laughs> being proactive are the negative voices. And you ask any of the council people here in the room, as an obligation, they then have to respond to that. So, so much policy and guidelines, unfortunately, are driven by a consistent negative voice. So they have to respond and then these people are the ones that go like this. And he, he put this post on my website and he said, look, he said, I've read some of the comments because, you know, our ABC suddenly having a talking hedge on there, it was like, oh, that's all a bit scary. So there was some pretty solid comments go out there. And he said, if you like it, you have to say something because otherwise there's, there's hundred, you know, a few hundred out of X number of multiple thousands watching but a few hundred comments that's the proportion so so you know that's that's what you're you're up against but we need to be that voice on the all the platforms so when something is good support it but voice it and 
be active about that voicing. Otherwise, anyone can write a negative comment and they will out of the fear. Would you agree? Yeah, it's a really good point. The first thing that the general manager of Sydney City Council said to me last night, she said, I've had a few, some emails criticising um, the meeting because not enough notice has been given. You know, as, I've got a th as though I've got $1,000 in the bank to go out and print leaflets. It was a meeting we put together. We had every intersection and road chalked. It was up on Facebook. And you think to yourself, exactly what Costa's saying. You've got to help those people in power. And the best help you can give them is po positive feedback saying, we want this. Never assume because it's a good thing that's going to happen. Assume that you need to say that you want it to happen. Do assume that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a simple thing. And uh, knowing, knowing people in positions in, in government and, and organisations, they, they're tied. They, they have to respond to that negative. And it drives them crazy because it's going to be that same email coming in every day. I'm never going to watch the show again because... And then next week, well, I'm turning off. And then next week, I'm still going to turn off. It, it, they haven't turned off for 34 episodes. So, you, you know, so it's, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And, and they're, they're bound by it. But then if we understand that that's how it goes, and the same thing happened in the street. We had some complaints. And council has to then go through the process of doing a survey. So they do a survey to then find that everyone was up for it and there was no legs. But all that energy was then foisted on the council <laughs> who could have been putting the energy into the actual project and it's not their fault. It's actually, I go so far as to say it's ours for not really pushing it and, and making that effort and saying, I love it, full stop, that's all you have to do. Blah, blah, blah. Dear council, that initiative, I love it. If they want a bit more information, because. <laughs> <laughs> and then they can call you back and say, well, more information. But no, that, I, I joke, but, but, it's, but it's no joke. It's, it's so simple. And then, and then that supports them and it inspires them to then drive the initiative and promote it and, and build it. And, and it's not just about what I was talking about, but it's, it's about everything. It's about everything.